Welcome to the weekly update where I'll go over the action in the market for the week of Monday, June 12th through Friday, June 16th, and then we'll see how things look for the week of June 20th through the 24th. On a daily chart basis, we've had a really good run up. We're looking quite overextended right now. It seems to be this exuberant attitude coming into the market. You had so many people for so long that just didn't believe the market was going to go higher. In fact, you had a lot of people thinking the market was going to go lower. Well, it's now starting to break higher. That is making our daily charts show a lot of improvement. But there are some warning signs under the surface. Doesn't mean that we have to heed those. We just want to be aware of them for right now. It's also switched a lot of our weekly charts over to being more positive, And we're starting to look extreme there. And I'll go through that as I show you the charts. A few notes just to go through before I start. I do have a supplemental video that I posted about a week ago. This has to do with hedging or protection or ways that you can use put options to not only protect your initial investment but also try to lock in some gains and I go through that in that video. I do have a PDF of the slides and charts that's available in the description so you can download this and follow along not only what I'm showing you but you can look at all the bullet points that you see here. I also have a private Facebook group that you're welcome to join. Just send me an invitation. I do have a poll that will be posted after I've completed doing this video. There is one area I want to address just quickly. On the YouTube channel especially, not so much on Rumble, but I get a lot of crap comments on there that are generally put up there by bots. They're dealing with crypto. They're talking about, oh, Mary Smith's a genius. Just follow along with that. Or I'm up $75,000 in the last week. Those are garbage comments and they get deleted immediately. Now, if you want to have a back and forth with me, that's what this is for. Even if you disagree with something that I say, that's fine. But I'm not going to let this be controlled by a lot of really garbage comments up there about cryptocurrencies that don't exist and all that other stuff. So if you see some comments there, I really try to keep tabs on that and they look like they're garbage. Don't be surprised if they're gone pretty quick. So please, don't put a name in your comment. Don't put some kind of a number, like a dollar amount, in your comment if you want to interact with me. I also have the Facebook group and other ways by providing you my email address that if you want to communicate that way, we can do it. I also post videos on Rumble. I kind of use that as a backup for YouTube. Or you could say that YouTube's my backup for Rumble, however you like to say that. Here is the channel in case you can't find me on YouTube. Let's go back and talk about the week session. For the week, we were up 2.58% in the S&P 500. Volume was above average. Now, some of that can be explained by quadruple witching, which happened on Friday. Awful lot of volume taking place. But overall, we are seeing a pickup in volume as the market has been going higher. The technicals are pretty positive, but even on the weekly charts, we're starting to look overextended. And I'll back that up as I go through the charts. Now that this old debt ceiling deal is all in the rearview mirror, it's back to focusing on inflation and interest rates. We did have the Fed that met this past week. They decided to keep rates the same. The market really fixated on what they said, and so far they seem to like that. We'll have to see if there's another reaction to that as we have economic reports that are released. Our trend is still positive, and it's strengthening with the ADX above the moving average and the green lines on top, so we are showing a positive trend. Here's for the week. The Dow was up 1.2%. The NASDAQ, which has really been leading, it was up 3.2%. The S&P up 2.6%. And then the small caps, which had a good week last week, they were okay but didn't see the strength this week, only being up half a percent. For the week, here are some just bullet points that I go through. The S&P was able to close above 4,400. Not too long ago, we were worried about getting through 4,200. We kind of blew through 4,300, and now we're up at 4,400, and it's had five straight winning weeks, while the NASDAQ has had gains for the last eight straight weeks. Goldman Sachs raised its 2023 year-end S&P 500 target price. It had been at 4,000. They raised it to 4,500. The economic reports that came out during the week, they were taken mostly as positive. The FOMC decision, that was taken as positive. And after some initial negative reaction and then follow-up at Chair Powell's press conference, that was also taken as positive. Now, this could shift at any time, but we're just looking at how are things right now. 
stock market is now under the idea that the Fed may not over tighten after all. That's been kind of a concern that they'll keep tightening until something breaks. Well, we've had a bit of a problem with the banking situation. That doesn't seem to be that big of a deal now. Now, it could come back in the picture at any time, but the Fed is trying to get the target rate of inflation back down to 2%. The market at this particular moment is confident that they are doing that. The FOMC did leave rates unchanged. We're at five to five and a quarter. They came out and said that they will likely start raising rates later. And the market liked that because maybe there's a chance that they might not raise rates later. They also raised the terminal rate when they'll stop. It had been at 5.1%. Now they've raised it up to 5.6%, which means that they're going to keep rates higher for longer. There are some charts that are suggesting that the Fed may be done, or they're close to being done. Then in Europe, the European Central Bank, they raised their rates 25 basis points. The Bank of Japan left their rates unchanged. They have a little different scenario that they're dealing with. China actually cut their rates because they're having a lot of weaker than expected economic data concerning their retail sales, their industrial production, and some of their bonds or fixed asset investments. The markets are closed on Monday in observance of Juneteenth. And I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. It's kind of a new holiday to me. Now I go back and hit just some of the highlights that happen each day of the week. On Monday, the S&P closed at its highest level since April 21st, 2022. At that time, we were going up and then starting to come back down. Now we're in a different context where we are moving higher. Mega caps, which have been really strong, they led the day on Monday. Then on Tuesday, we did have some more positive action. Small and mid caps, which had done well, then not very good. Now they seem to do a little bit better. Then later in the week, they kind of dropped off. Then on Wednesday was when the FOMC made their announcement. On Thursday, stocks were up really strong. All of the major indexes closed at their daily highs. This was when the S&P closed above 4,400. Then on Friday, we were overextended. We had quadruple witching and the market ended up pulling back. Because we are becoming quite overbought, we've seen the market go up pretty fast, pretty quickly. And so there are folks that probably wanted to take some profits, especially ahead of a three-day weekend. The S&P, though, even though it fell back, is still above 4,400. Now, let's look at the poll results. One question was more personal in nature. First of all, the first question over here on the left, the supplemental video was posted last week covering the concept of using protection or hedging, I just asked folks, do you tend to do that? Didn't have all that many responses, but 67% say they do sometimes, where 33% say that they never do that. If you don't really know what that is, if you wanna get more into that, please watch that supplemental video. It gives you just a basic idea of what I'm talking about. Then over on the left and the bottom, on an intraday basis, last week the S&P was able to break above 4,300. Here we are at 4,400. We tested the August 2022 high before we fell back below that going into the close. Where do you think we'll go from here? Well, we will close above both levels this week, 20%. Nobody said that we will remain below and go sideways. 20% said that we'll close above both levels in the near future. 40% said that we won't close above either of those levels for a long time. 20% said we're never going to close above those levels. So... The one that we actually ended up being correct was the very top one. We were able to close above both of those levels. Then June 14th, that's when the Fed met. Do you think that they'll raise rates, lower rates, or keep them the same? 67% that they'll keep them the same, and that's what they ended up doing. Then last week, I had to switch how I do the videos. I used a different microphone. I had to do everything more or less in one take. I couldn't do any editing. And I asked, what do you think the quality of that video was? 67% said it was about the same. And actually, 33% said it was better. Hmm, interesting. All right, let's go through some Isabel Net blog charts. The first one is saying, semiconductors say that there won't be any kind of a landing. We're just going to keep screaming to the upside. That's the light blue line. Where the PMI, it's going down and looking more negative, and that's suggesting that we might see some economic weakness. Then we're looking at inflows into equities. It's really starting to spike up. Remember, a lot of these are a reaction to what's already happened. People are thinking, ah, oh, the market's not going to do anything. It's going to go down. We're going to head into a lot of trouble. And then they look and, wow, it's going up. I better jump in. I have a real fear of missing out right now. And so we're seeing a lot of money going back into the market. 
Then Thursday and Friday are historically strong when we look back in 2023 so far. Friday, and I've shown this before, we've been up 101% for an average return. And then Thursday has been 79.7%. And then we can also compare that to other days in the week. Looking at earnings estimates, I don't usually show these charts, but I'm trying to show them again because this is where a lot of the optimism is coming from. Whether it's Morgan Stanley or the consensus, what these estimates are doing is they're going up. And when they're going up, that justifies higher stock prices. Then we're looking at the Fed Fund's target rate. This is Goldman Sachs' forecast. After we hit up over 5%, they see us coming down from that level, and they're pretty much mirroring what is happening in the futures market. This chart is saying just 15% expect stronger economic growth. You have a lot of pessimism when it comes to the market currently. And then the Magnificent Seven, whether it's the Wonderful Five or the Great Eight or the Benevolent Twelve, whatever you want to do, this is the percent of market cap that they have overall. And as they've been going up, this is why the indexes are going up. And I've been hearing over and over and over, and also seeing this in some of our charts, if you take out these seven stocks, the S&P really hasn't done all that much. It's these seven stocks that have really contributed to the indexes going higher. Then asset allocations, they're underweight in equities. This could be positive. This is the light blue line where you have folks that are still pretty gun shy, where the American Association of Individual Investors, they're starting to get a little more optimistic on things. But they had been quite pessimistic. If these turn and go back up, that could give some good support to the stock market. All right, then FactSet just had one blog post this week. It was on Friday. It said the lowest number of S&P 500 companies that are citing ESG, if you even know what that is, on earnings calls. That's kind of a new way of doing things. It's considered controversial. Some people see this as a very positive thing. Other people see it as a real negative thing. But it's happening nonetheless, and so we're seeing a real drop-off when we look at the chart where they had been talking a lot about it in 2020 and into 2021. They're starting to talk about it less. I don't know if that's because they're finding some pushback in going in this kind of a direction or if they're just implementing as part of their overall system and so they don't see the real need to bring it up. Then looking at our charts, here's the intraday chart going back to Monday where we were pretty much flat at the opening, and then we shot up later in the day. And that's usually a good sign. This means the smart money is coming in later on and actually doing some buying. Then on Tuesday, we gapped higher and then pretty much chopped sideways. Wednesday, this is when the Fed met, and we had a higher open. We made it all the way up to this R2 level, came back down, settled down, and then when we dropped, that's when the announcement was first made. It came down to the support level. We were able to bounce up off of that. And more or less, by the time we closed, we pretty much ended right where we started, which could be taken as positive. Then Thursday is when we saw the real strength in the market. It just kept going up and up and up. Friday, we were flat and then saw some weakness going into the close. All right, so for the week, the NASDAQ 100, NASDAQ, and S&P did the best, and all of the indexes for just the five trading days ended up being positive. We go back to the beginning of the year, the NASDAQ 100 and the NASDAQ and the S&P are performing the best, but all indexes are now positive. Going back to the all-time high, all the indexes are still negative, and you still have small caps that are leading the way behind, where the Dow is the one that's recovering the most. Looking at the sectors for the week where you had tech, materials, and discretionary. These are growth areas, especially tech and discretionary. They're doing quite well right now, and that's really giving support to the market. If you look at the very bottom, energy ended up being down slightly on the week, but all of the other sectors were positive. Here is our relative rotation graph. This goes back one year, and it compares how are things performing when compared to the S&P. We have XLK, which is tech which is showing a little bit of weakness, but it's still green. And then XLC, which is communication. It's also starting to show a little bit of weakness, but it's still over here in this upper quadrant area. And again, if you need a quick primer on this, if you can remember back to your geometry class, where the line going across is your X axis, the line going up and down is the Y axis. If we're going to the right of the Y axis, that's positive for the X axis. If we're going to the left, that's negative. And then we have more of a plus, 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 minus, minus, plus, minus, minus when we're doing a kind of a score. Well, a lot of the sectors are still in the minus, minus category, but they're turning up slightly. However, they're still red, but some of them are showing some improvement. Then we take a little bit of a different look where we base this against the S&P 500 and how have they done over the last three months. 
Not a lot of change in some of the other sectors where we're seeing some weakness with communication, but yet tech is still performing well with discretionary also doing much better, which is pretty much what we're seeing in our other charts. For the week, here are how the sectors performed. You had materials, industrials, staples, and tech doing the best, and all of the other sectors ended up being positive. Going back to the beginning of the year, we have tech, communication, and discretionary doing the best. Some of the others are kind of more near the midpoint, where we still have financials, healthcare, utilities, and energy more defensive. They are underwater going back to the beginning of the year. Going back to the all-time high, energy is still doing the best. And then we have most of the other sectors showing a lot of weakness since that time. Looking at sentiment, we're starting to get extreme positive now. When we go above 75, we're right now at 82. That means the market's getting a little too happy about what's happening. When we get to these extreme readings, we start looking at a possible contrarian type of signal. Here's the historical chart showing how we broke above 75. So we're just kind of keeping an eye on that, but we want to wait until we see confirmation in the charts to either get out of long positions or look at the idea of getting into some short positions. Here's the active asset managers. Now these guys, even though they're professional money managers, a lot of them were pretty negative on things not so long ago. And then all of a sudden the market shoots up they have customers they have to make happy, and so a lot of these guys are really jumping into the market. They had been getting to kind of an extreme reading. Well, that backed off in this past week. Here's another look at that same chart where we're down at 81.66 now. Still kind of extreme positive, even though it has dropped a bit. The right X bear bull ratio, this actually spiked up quite a bit. You have a lot of individual investors that use right X mutual funds. And they don't really believe what's happening, so they ended up getting more into the bearish funds. And then what happens? We start going up. The ulcer index. This is another way of looking at fear in the market. It's really dropping off. And we're seeing that same thing on the daily chart, where the VIX is really dropping off with the line chart and the bar chart. We're just not seeing a lot of fear in the market. We look at cash and we compare it to the tech sector. When this black line is going down, that's really good for tech. 2022 was very difficult, and now we see the black line starting to decline again, which is positive for tech. Then we're looking at the American Association of Individual Investors. They are showing a lot more optimism. They tend to follow what's already happened. And if you're listening to this video, this group is you, okay? And it's also myself, just individuals who participate in the market. We're not getting really an extreme positive reading now, but we are seeing a lot of improvement. Then looking at the economy, this is the latest GDP forecast tool put out by the Atlanta Fed, where they're now seeing us a little bit under 2% for GDP. When you look at economists, the top 10%, they're about at 2% if we go up. We're looking at about maybe minus half a percent or so if we have negative GDP. Here's what it looks like on a bar chart. What we're really focused on now is further on the right, which is the second quarter of 2023. Then looking at the spread between risky bonds and not as risky bonds, we're not getting any kind of a warning sign. If this was developing into a problem, this ratio would be going up and it's actually going down. We look at the financial conditions index where we're below this black line, that is still positive. Then we look at the bank tightening standards. This hasn't been updated since the early part of May. It just shows that banks are getting a lot more stingy with who and how they're lending money. The real-time SOM indicator has not been updated since June 2nd. We're below the black line. When we get really nervous is when we go above the red line and we're far away from that. The smooth recession probability. Also, at the black line, we get nervous when we go above the red line. We're far away. The Bray Butters was updated. This is a little bit of a concern. We're actually going above this black line. We want to keep an eye on this. Looking at inflation, here's the inflation now cast. We had inflation information come out this past week, so there was a little bit of adjustment that went on here. The Fed, this is as it stands as of Friday. I won't show these charts anymore until we get closer to the end of July, which is the next Fed meeting. There's a 74.4% chance that the Fed is going to raise rates 25 basis points. And this changes every day. It goes up and down and all over the place. In fact, looking at the next chart, you can see where it's still pretty strong here. That's the dark blue. That was as of Friday. Then we compare it to a day ago, a week ago, and a month ago. And more people are getting into this camp that the Fed is going to raise rates. As the market goes up and down, as economic reports are released, this will change each day. The Fed balance sheet continues to drop off as they're doing quantitative tapering. 
The Fed balance sheet also is showing a decrease when we look at it a little different way. Looking at our breadth, we're positive, where we're above the moving average based on price and volume. So that's good overall. This is another encouraging area. Where we were concerned is that the new highs were not breaking out as the market was going higher. Well, that changed this past week. You can see this green bar really shot up. We're turning up with our four-week moving average as well as the 10-week moving average. We're also seeing a lot of improvement on the daily chart. The advanced decline ratio did get a little extreme in the shorter term, came back down just slightly, but is still positive. Accumulation distribution, when we're above this red line and advancing, that's positive. Looking at our trend, here's the ADX. We're above the moving average and going higher. The green line is on top and going up. We're seeing overbought conditions on the short-term daily ADX chart that we look at and even the regular ADX chart. This one is not extreme yet, but it is showing that the trend is improving. Our rune indicators also on the daily chart and here on the weekly chart starting to give us an extreme positive reading. The green line measures the buyers. When this is pegged to the top, that means buyers are in control. When the red line's on the bottom, that means sellers are not really doing very much. The oscillator down below compares the difference between the two. And when we get to a really high level like this, sometimes that can signal an overbought condition. But if you look in the past, there are times when we came up to this level and just stayed there for a long time. So we can do that. That might suggest that there's good momentum behind this move. The mass index is not generating a signal right now, so I won't go through that. Some of our other charts, here's the daily chart where we're just breaking out. We're getting back up above August 2022 highs. We do have some more highs that might run into some problems if we, in fact, keep going up. If we pull back, we'll be looking at these other pivot levels as possible support. And then on the bottom, you can see where volume really went through the roof. We're above the 50 period simple moving average and going up. That's positive. Our long term trend continues to be positive. We're above the monthly pivot points, which is positive. We're above the center line of our trend channel going back to 2009. The McClellan oscillator is above zero and advancing. The summation index based on price is also positive, as well as volume. If this continues to go up, we might start to see some extreme positive readings, but we're not seeing those yet. The Swinland trading oscillator advancing based on price and volume, and both are above zero. That's positive. This is where there's a little bit of a concern. If you look up here on top, these are Bollinger Bands, and for the week, we closed outside the upper Bollinger Band. The percent B indicator measures that, and when we get above this blue line, that means that maybe we've gone up a little too far too fast. But if you look at other times when that happened, that didn't necessarily mean that things were going to reverse. It might just mean that they slow down for a while. And then the bullish percent index, we're seeing almost the same reading on the daily chart. We're above 50 and advancing and showing improvement. The PMO, which is a momentum oscillator, continues to be positive. We're above zero based on price and volume. And then our PMO study, starting to get a little extreme positive with the PMOs that are rising, as well as with the buy signals, and we're showing improvement with those that are above zero. We're seeing almost these exact same readings on the daily charts. The check and money flow continues to be positive, even though we're going sideways. The check and oscillator, starting to get extreme positive. All of our oscillators are now going back up. We have our short term, intermediate term, and our longer term oscillators. You might be a little concerned about this. We're starting to get a little extended with our longer term indicators. The slope is above where it, sometimes it ends up topping out. The MACD might be getting a little bit too strong. But nonetheless, as of right now, our momentum continues to be positive, And we're seeing those same readings on the daily charts. The rate of change going back one week since we had the up week is showing improvement. Going back 50 weeks, we might be getting a little extreme when we go back a year and compare how things have performed. The force index is above zero in advancing. Might be getting a little extreme here, but it's still positive. The RSI, not giving us an extreme positive reading. We're above 50 in advancing. The money flow continues to be positive. The Stoke RSI is extreme positive, as is the Williams percent R, seeing the same thing on the daily charts. This is where we're seeing a real contradiction. Where the special K is starting to turn over positive on the daily charts, we're starting to cross over negative on the weekly charts. So that's just one area to be aware of. The ultimate oscillator is starting to get extreme positive. The vortex could be getting rather extreme, but it's still positive. And longer term, we're well above our 200 week moving average. To me, that's the long term trend. As long as we're above this line, we are still in a secular bull market. 
Now, what we experienced in 2022 was a cyclical bear market, but as long as we remain above this longer moving average and now we're going back up, the longer term secular bull market still continues. The Copic curve is generating a buy signal and we're seeing that on the daily charts. And then our different variations. Our hike in Ashley based on a weekly chart is looking positive. The Kegi is positive. The Renko is positive. The three line break is positive. And the ease of movement on top, I really have two different things. This is an equivolume chart. When it's green and going up, they're trying to take volume and price and match them up together. Then down below, we have the ease of movement where we had an up week, so that's positive. And then going back 14 weeks, we're also looking more positive. The point and figure chart didn't generate a new signal, but we had two new green X's drawn in here. The last signal that was generated was on May 15th, and that's an ascending triple top breakout. Our different trading systems, the Elder Impulse system for the S&P is positive with green bars and we have the dots below on the parabolic SAR. Some broad market looks. This is just a look at the S&P, the mid caps and the small caps where the S&P is breaking out. We're showing some improvement with the mid caps as well as the small caps is a little more pronounced on the daily charts. The Dow continues to be in an uptrend. The NASDAQ is really in an uptrend. NASDAQ 100 also really in an uptrend. We're starting to hit some resistance on the daily charts with the NASDAQ and NASDAQ 100. Pretty important Fibonacci levels. We're waiting to see, are we going to bounce down from those levels or are we going to be able to clear those at some point? If you want more information on that, please keep up with the daily videos that I post. The mid caps showing a recent death cross here, but we did see some strength. On the daily charts, the mid caps just regenerated a new golden cross. And the small caps also seeing some weakness, but they're bouncing back a little bit. They're still negative on the daily charts, but showing some improvement. The Wilshire broad measure is still looking positive, and the NYSE chopping sideways, showing some improvement though. All stocks continue to be positive. Looking at the 30 biggest software companies, very positive. The FANG index, which has been breaking out, and we're watching this too. Can it get back up to this 8,000 level? That would be the all-time high. It may also act as overhead resistance. ARC actually is looking better. We saw a golden cross on the daily chart. We're not quite there yet on the weekly chart. Then looking at the traditional Dow theory, where the Dow has been holding up fairly well, the transports, after showing some weakness, are starting to come back. And there's some things under the surface that might suggest the transports are showing some improvement. We have been seeing some weakness in utilities, but lately it's showing a bit of improvement overall. The bank index, after just getting hammered, we're coming back up after getting an extreme negative RSI reading. And the MACD is also starting to turn back up. There's a longer term chart going back to 2007 that I show of the financial sector. That could be pretty significant support. And so far we've held above that. That would really help the overall market if this banking crisis does seem to be under control and the financial sector could really get some legs underneath it. Looking at the number of deposits, it's ticking back up now as folks aren't as freaked out as they were recently. Then looking at the broad market, here is the CRB index, which this is one way that we look at inflation. It continues to be in a downtrend. Oil is still dancing around that 70 level or so. Copper is showing some weakness, but is still in an overall uptrend. It came down to its longer term moving average and has been able to bounce up off of that. The dollar, which had been showing some improvement, is now starting to go back down. That's also giving some support for stocks to go higher. Gold is still in an overall uptrend, as is silver. Then looking at bonds, the weekly bond ETF chopping more or less sideways, but is still in an uptrend. Stocks continue to outperform bonds on a monthly chart. Then we look at the move index, which measures the volatility of bonds. Bonds were up on Friday, so the volatility dropped as the VIX has been dropping. The correlation is not as strong as it usually is, but is still tending to go in the same general direction. Then we're looking at the one month yield and then subtracting the three month yield. We're back more to a normal reading now after we had gone kind of crazy there for a while. The daily chart of the yields show that we did tick up on Friday and we've been chopping more or less sideways in some of these maturities. The blue line, which is the three month, has been going back up and that's one area that we're keeping an eye on. A weekly chart international where we have the US, UK and German rates starting to go back up. Japan is the red line. They have their own little story there and they're keeping rates fairly low. 
Some relative studies. Here's the intermarket analysis chart going back to the all-time high. If you watch the other intermarket analysis video, I have a new chart where I go back to the beginning of 2023. But going back to the start of 2022, oil has still been performing the best, followed by the dollar and then gold, where stocks and bonds continue to be negative. We're seeing almost an inverse of that if you go back to the beginning of 2023. The NASDAQ 100 is really outperforming the S&P. The bigger stocks that make up the S&P 500, which is the S&P 100, they are outperforming the S&P 500. Growth is showing some real improvement when compared to value. We're starting to see a lot of improvement on the daily charts. And now that this is going up, we're getting ready to see a golden cross on the weekly chart. Gold, even though it's seeing some weakness, is still in an overall uptrend compared to the S&P. Bonds continue to underperform the S&P. Energy, which had been strong in 2022, we see a death cross here with this ratio when compared to tech and has now been really underperforming. Low volatility stocks, which held up well in 2022, are now showing weakness compared to the S&P. Gold came right up to this weekly trend line and we're bouncing back down from that when compared to the dollar. Discretionary is showing a lot of improvement compared to staples. Look at another way. This is growth versus value. Looking at our secular and cyclical trend studies, this is longer term. And for those of you that watch the daily videos, when I, at the end, I say our longer term positive setups are still there. This is what I'm talking about. This was generated back in October, 2022. And we came up out of that. And this is an NYSE breadth thrust. And this stays kind of indefinitely on the books. And we're still working off of that signal. Another signal that was generated back in March of 2023 is this WAG NYSE breadth thrust. We saw a real low reading, which immediately followed with a real high reading. And this is also kind of indefinitely on the books. And then another one is the NYSE Zohorchak method, where it had been negative for 2022 and into 2023. It's now still generating a buy signal. Our historical momentum studies where we're looking at this and not paying as much of attention to it now because it's getting further in the rearview mirror. But in 1999 to 2004, we had a couple of breakouts above this downward sloping trend line only to see them fail. Well, if you compare it to what was happening with the MACD, it's not really hard to see why. We also had a failure back in 2007 through 2010. So what are we looking at now? The MACD is positive and going up. We broke out above this downward sloping trend line. And as of right now, it's holding up fairly well. In fact, I'm not showing this chart in the daily videos anymore because we're getting further and further behind this indicator. So what's the outlook? Here is the economic reports that will be coming out. Please be reminded we'll be closed on Monday. Not a real heavy week overall, but there are some influential reports that will be coming out. The Fed is going to be making some speeches this week. Probably the most important ones will be Jerome Powell on Wednesday and Thursday. On Wednesday, he'll be testifying before the House, on Thursday before the Senate, and he has to do this two times a year. He'll have his prepared remarks, and then it's the Q&A that the market may really pay attention to to see if there's anything strange being said. Then looking at the Stock Traders Almanac statistics just for Monday, June 20th, where we're neutral to negative with the Dow, neutral to positive with the S&P, and we're more positive with the NASDAQ. And I don't know why this spacing didn't quite work out. We will be on the 13th trading day of the month, where we're following the green dash line for the S&P, where we tend to see a little bit of positive bias. Then here's an update of this chart showing that the NASDAQ tends to have its best eight months into the middle part of July, and we have not reached that point yet. This purple line is what the S&P has been doing. So our scenarios, this is just based on Tuesday's session. We're not going with the down one right now unless you are completely convinced that we're overbought to such an extent that we're going to really turn and go down. We are more focusing on the up one, but we are overextended to the upside, but all of our charts are still looking fairly positive. We're not going with the sideways trend based on the daily charts because both of our ADX indicators that we look at are showing that we're in a strong trend. And on our weekly chart, we're showing that even though we're below 20 with the ADX, the trend is getting stronger. So warning signs. This is based on how things looked as of Friday, and it's also applicable to the daily videos that I put out for Tuesday this week. The bullish percent indexes are diverging when we look at other indexes, especially the NYSE, but the S&P BPI has crossed above 50 and is showing some improvements. 
There's a lot of things to be worried about. The market's been climbing a real wall of worry. We have some negative divergences. We have signs of weakness. But a lot of these areas are showing improvement. Now, if we really turn and start going lower, a lot of this positive work that has been done could just be wiped out. But for right now, it is showing improvement. The VIX is still showing a lot of complacency. The cumulative new highs and new lows on the NASDAQ, those are showing weakness. They turned up a little bit on Friday, but there's a real solid decline overall. The three-month yield. We're above where we were at in 2007, right before the great financial crisis. We're wondering, is that generating some kind of a warning sign? Small caps also gave a recent death cross, but we've seen some strength as they're trying to bounce back. Right now, they're really dealing with some overhead resistance, which at one time had been support. Earnings season continues, and it's more of on a case-by-case -case basis. Positive signs, the seasonality and setups that I did go through just a moment ago, that's what I'm talking about here. The new highs and new lows for the S&P are really expanding. That had been a concern. Now we're seeing some improvement. The long-term special K on the daily chart is starting to cross over positive. The equity put call ratio on a very long-term chart is also turning more positive. The Coppit curve and the Pring bottom fissure on the daily charts are generating buy signals. The S&P remains above a downtrend channel upper line, which at one time looked like it might offer overhead resistance. We've just blown right through that. The market is also more in a risk on posture, meaning that they're favoring stocks over bonds. Lower price levels, which could be a moving average, a previous high, a level in a different index, they may provide some kind of support if we start to fall. The S&P is outperforming utilities, which could really help the S&P. The NASDAQ and NASDAQ 100 continue to break out, but they are dealing with some overhead resistance. The staples are really underperforming the S&P, which could be positive, And the mid caps have generated a recent golden cross on the daily chart. Small and mid-cap growth is still showing strength. Although we're seeing some recent weakness, they're still in overall uptrends. So our conclusion, the S&P it's positive, but it's overbought. There are a lot of negative things to worry about, but those negative divergences and negative things are showing some improvement. In the short term, we're positive but overbought. In the intermediate term, positive but overbought. We still continue to be positive in the longer term because we're above the 200-day simple moving average. Thank you. I really hope you found this helpful. I really also hope that you go and check out some of the other videos that I post. Nonetheless, I hope you have a really good weekend and I will talk to you in the next video.